Welcome back. Let's continue with our lecture on general theory of relativity. So, in the last uh, lecture, we have seen Einstein introduce basic postulates of uh, special theory of relativity. The first one, which is same as Galilean principle, that which says that log of physics is invariant under all inertial frame. So, there is not going to be any change from uh, that aspect. The next one is uh, the speed of light is going to be same for all inertial frame irrespective of their velocity. So, this uh, leads to the concept of local time for each uh, inertial observer. So, that is uh, one of the uh, very fundamental difference between the uh, special theory of relativity and Newtonian mechanics. In addition to that, uh, we also see that the speed of light becoming a universal constant. What we now need is a transformation which uh, leaves the inertial frame invariant and the speed of light is same for all observers. This transformation is the Lorentz transform. Lorentz and Poincare have worked all the mathematical details needed to keep the Maxwell's uh, equation invariant. However, the one trivial factor which they missed is to put the speed of light to be upper limit for all signal exchange and the speed of light is same for all observer. Once postulates of special theory of uh, relativity become clear, then it is straightforward to use the Lorentz transformation. Now, however, uh, in this uh, lecture, we are going to take slightly different approach, not work out the Lorentz transformation as given uh, in many places. It is just to look at the idea of that and how we can uh, use that to generalize further. Mm -hmm. So, we are sticking to only one concept here that the speed of light is going to be same for all inertial observers. Using this fundamental fact, we show that the properties of Lorentz transformation and then we come back to specific example to get the Lorentz transformation in specific direction. Let's continue with the lecture. Let's first quickly recollect geometry of special theory of relativity or uh, space-time geometry. So we have two postulates. One says that laws of physics should be same in all inertial frame, and the second one, which says that the speed of light in vacuum is same for frames irrespective of their relative speed. Speed of light is maximum speed at which any signal can be exchanged between the observer. We have to incorporate this two principle and then get a transformation from one inertial frame to another inertial frame and that would be consistent with postulate and here leave the Maxwell's equation invariant. Our new inertial frame are four dimensional or space time. The first one, zeroth component, is always referred to time in my notation, and then the spatial component goes 1, 2, 3, which uh, corresponds to x, y, and z direction. In the generalized coordinate, they can take uh, appropriate coordinate variable. And these points are formally called the uh, space time events. Now, the space time interval between two events, that is e x1, x2, x3, and the neighboring point, which is infinitely separated by t plus dt x1 plus dx1 plus x2 plus dx2 plus x3 plus dx3 is given by ds square that is a notation used for the space time interval dt square minus dx square dy square plus dz square called it dx dy dz to start with later we can use dx1 dx2 dx3 etc but currently let's go with this notation the space time interval is now classified into three type that is called the time like space like and null now our goal is to have a transformation from one inertial frame o1 with the coordinate system x mu and o2 with the coordinate system xi mu the x mu consists of x0 x1 x2 and x3 the same way xi mu consists of xi 0, xi 1, xi 2, xi 3, etc. Now, let us quickly recollect the property of Galilean transformation. We have seen earlier Galilean transformation is given by xi is equal to alpha ij xi j plus beta i. And we have a condition that alpha ij should not depend on any of the variable and beta i takes the very specific form where it is given by beta i is equal to vt plus 
represents x naught where v is a constant and x naught is a constant which represents the uniform motion. Now we have to translate this condition into one which preserves the speed of light. In our special theory of relativity since because uh, we are using the space time geometry time also become coordinate system we see that it is not necessary to have this because time this is absorbed into this and we only have beta i is equal to x naught i which is constant that means to say that we can absorb to the i simply alpha i and then we simply need only alpha i if we ignore the displacement or the shift of origin with constant value x naught we can simply ignore the beta i and keep only alpha to represent the coordinate transformation and then arrive at the condition so we can write the transformation as x mu is equal to lambda mu nu xi nu so now it is a general notation that the lorentz transformation are represented by gamma now you also note that we are using greek indices nu nu etc they takes the values 0 1 2 and 3 while the zeroth component represents the time and ijk the latin indices we take 1 2 3 the spatial coordinate so this brings in consistency so if we put ijk or abc latin indices they represent 1 2 3 and if you want to space time indices then you should use a greek indices mu nu which goes from 0 to 3 so that is how to distinguish between the four dimensional formula and three dimensional formula without explicitly mentioning. Let us continue that now our transformation is given by lambda mu nu. Now we have to impose inertial frame nature. We have seen that inertial frame nature is fairly straightforward to impose that the, your transformation matrix now should not depend on the coordinate explicitly. That means partial differentiation of a mu nu with respect to sigma rho should be zero it also includes the time as well as a spatial derivative should go to zero this gives us the transformation from one coordinate system to another coordinate system leaving the frame to be inertial now that is not enough to represent the special theory of relativity we also need the speed of light to be preserved or null direction to remain same in all coordinate system if we impose this condition also in this type of coordinate system, see what kind of a transformation we get. For Minkowski, Einstein's teacher, who is the first formulated geometric aspect of the special theory of relativity, and instead of a cumbersome notation used by Einstein, Einstein introduced a complex time and used the Euclidean distance, but it is possible to introduce the pseudo Euclidean distance and call it a time. All you have to change is the distance between the two points using the pseudo euclidean distance so let a be a point in the space time given by the coordinate system x mu and the b be the neighboring point given by the coordinate system x mu plus d mu so x mu is the position and the d mu is the difference between the point a and b the space time interval d square is given by d square minus dx square plus dy square minus dz square in a compact notation, it is represented by eta mu nu dx mu dx nu. Here we call the eta mu nu as a covariant metric which is given by the component eta mu nu is equal to diagonal only. All the off-diagonal elements are 0 and the first component is 1 and the, all the spatial components are minus 1. So this way you get length element as dt square minus dx square minus dz square. So that is a way how to include the pseudo Euclidean distance. We can also inverse or contravariant metric to eta mu nu that is determined by our standard definition that is eta mu sigma into eta sigma nu is equal to delta mu nu where delta mu nu is a Kronecker symbol. Now we have eta mu nu contravariant tensor is also given by 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. So usually the distance is given by two opposite sign. In this case, distance is given and the convention I'm using here is a plus minus minus minus, which is basically a diagonal element of Minkowski metric. One could have it the other way around. One could define the Minkowski metric as minus one plus one plus one and plus one. That is also is a genuine formalism, which could give the same uh, results. However, time-like and space-like definition would get uh, interchanged.
Now this geometry is called the Minkowski space time. So Minkowski space time is basically given by the geometric description of space time with the metric given here diagonal element of 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1. Here is where we do special theory of relativity and here we have to find out the transformation from one system to another system which leaves the velocity of light invariant. Now the transformation which leads to invariance of velocity of light in the Minkowski space is called the Lorentz transformation. Again let us take two points A and B which are connected by the null interval. That means that the light is propagating from A to B in a coordinate system O. Then we have distance between A and B is given by eta mu nu dx mu dx nu is equal to 0. That means it is null connect. Now we look at another coordinate system O2 which is represented by coordinate xi mu. The principle of special theory of relativity says that the point A and B as seen in the coordinate system O2 should also connected by null element because it is a light which propagate from A to B and that should be same in all inertial frame including O2. Actually, we can see it as a space-time diagram usually represented the space along x-axis and time along y-axis. We have another coordinate system xi which may be rotated or a different coordinate system and we have a transformation between the two. The first inertial frame is called O1 and the second coordinate system is called O2. Then event A and B which are connected by a null separation. That means that x square is equal to 0. Now the time interval for this event a and b in O1 coordinate given by dx0. The same way we can project it on the O2 coordinate system and then we can get the time interval for this event in the O2 coordinate system is given by d xi0. Same way we can get the spatial separation between these two event in O1 that is given by dxi and in the O2 it is given by dxi1. I am not going to plot it. It is going to be somewhere down here where my tab is not big enough. Even if it is big enough it is not worth. You simply have to extend this line to get touch this xi1 axis and then you can get. The important point is that the, this displacement ds square eta mu nu dx mu dx nu that is 0 in O1 and same path is represented by light propagation then we should have eta mu nu d xi nu d xi nu should be equal to 0. So this is what the concept of preserving the speed of light in the space-time geometry and we should see what kind of a transformation allows this. Now we have a transformation going from x mu to xi mu which we define as a x mu is equal to lambda mu nu xi nu. Now we have to put the condition on xi mu such that above condition is satisfied. This is the basic idea behind the Lorentz transformation. Let us go ahead and complete this and see what kind of condition we get. We have two inertial frame or Minkowski space time. Let us separate them by a partition. One is called the O1 with the coordinate system x mu. Another is called O2 with the coordinate system xi mu. A and B are the event which are null separate. This is the condition which is valid for both the observer O1 and O2. So we can have a point A given by x mu in one coordinate system and it is given by xi mu in the another coordinate system. We have a point B which is given by x mu plus dx mu in O1 coordinate system and it is given by x mu plus d xi mu in the second coordinate system. It is connected by a light ray or it is null separate. The condition here is given by ds square is equal to eta mu nu dx mu dx nu and then in the O2 coordinate system we have dx square is equal to x mu d xi mu and d xi nu. Again cut and paste problem and then we have a transformation connecting them. Transformation given by x mu is equal to lambda mu nu xi mu and we have dx mu is equal to lambda mu nu d xi mu because we have already incorporated the condition for the inertial frame that is dx lambda mu nu is constant. Now let us substitute dx mu with the coordinate system into this and let us get the expression for the 
length element. What we get is ds square is equal to eta mu nu lambda mu rho lambda nu rho lambda nu sigma into d xi rho d xi sigma equal to 0. Now, this is the length element which should be same as what is given in the O2 frame also and we have to equate them and get the condition for the transformation matrix. Now, we get this expression we equate this is 0 equal to 0 it is a scalar not a big problem to equate. However, the indices really do not match this typo again crop in here and then what we have to do is rename the dummy indices so that they can be called same. So, I have renamed mu nu in the second expression by rho and sigma so that consistently all the mu's are removed by rho and all the nu's are replaced by sigma and then we see that it is the same thing and we can express the condition as a eta mu nu gamma mu rho into gamma nu sigma is equal to eta rho sigma. So, this looks like is a condition which the Lorentz transformation should satisfy and it looks like rather too trivial rather remarkable that this simple expression represents the Lorentz transformation. But we need to understand it more carefully in terms of the physics before evaluating the component. What do we have? We have the condition let us try to further rewrite this in a slightly different fashion. We multiply it by alpha rho just to get it in a better form. What we get is eta mu nu into gamma mu alpha into gamma rho. So, that means we are contracting between the these two variables and that can be written as gamma into mu alpha into gamma into mu sigma is equal to delta alpha sigma. So, this is a condition which Lorentz transformation should satisfy. This looks like a rather trivial thing. All expression for the Lorentz transformation you have encountered must have a rather complicated expression. So, in the matrix notation this simply can be written as a gamma transport into gamma should be equal to 1 that you can visualize from this expression here the contraction happened with respect to first two indices. In fact, the multiplication would demand that the second indices index to be contracted with the first index of the second matrix. So, you have to take a transport and what we get is a, a transport A is equal to 1. Because we are familiar with this kind of a notation, let us remind you that the rotation matrix in three dimension usually satisfies the condition which is called the A transport A is equal to 1 and we call them orthogonal matrix which represents a spatial rotation. We know that the rotation is a one of the transformation in the Galilean coordinate transformation. Now, this represents that the Lorentz transformation also satisfies the similar transformation and the Lorentz transformation is a some kind of a rotation very similar to the rotation which we see in the three dimensional space. Only difference is that the time is involved. So, this gives you an analogy between the rotation and the Lorentz transformation. Let us look at it more carefully and there are 16 elements. Let us partially see them what each of them represent. Let us represent Lorentz transformation in terms of a 4 cross 4 matrix. Coordinate here is a time and then we have next 3 coordinate given by the spatial coordinate system. So, the transformation is accordingly have a 0 to 3 and we have a 16 comp. Now, let us look at the part of this matrix. Let us leave other element only these given in the boxes are non-zero. We can say that the lambda 1 1 can be given as a cos theta, lambda 2 2 can be given as a cos theta and then we have a lambda 1 2 as given a minus sin theta and same way lambda 2 1 to be minus sin theta. So, this represents the rotation in x y plane and that naturally satisfies the Lorentz transformation. So, rotation is also a sub transformation of a Lorentz transformation. So, this is what we get. We can extend this to all the rotation. We can usually we represent a rotation in a plane that is a x y plane we have already seen. So, we can have the rotation in the x z plane. So, that is given by the transformation. You fill in transformation element by cos and sin. You can get the full rotation matrix for x z plane. So, we can extend this to y z plane too and then we have 
have three rotation already built into Lorentz transformation. Okay, that is a good thing to have. So, we know some part of Lorentz transformation is nothing but the spatial rotation. So, the Galilean transformation is already a subspace of Lorentz transformation. This should happen because uh, we are going with the same concept that uh, it should preserve the structure of uh, inertial frame. What comes next is a one which preserves the velocity of light. Now, let us look at the non-trivial part of a Lorentz transformation. One can visualize them in terms of a similar to the rotation which involves one spatial coordinate and one time coordinate. Of course, there is a sign difference that would make some difference. Otherwise, it is essentially similar to the rotation. And it is called the Lorentz transformation, but Lorentz transformation is a general definition. This specific Lorentz transformation is often called the boost. Boost means this involves moving with the velocity in the x direction. So, that would be the uniformly moving frame. So, this is the boost along x axis. So, we can also have few more boosts that is like a taking a rocket and taking off. We can have the boost along y direction which involves the rotation in a plane spanned by the time and y axis. So, you have a rotation along T y plane is what we call the boost along y direction. Same way we can have a boost along z direction too which involves the one time and z direction. Now, I have a new understanding of Lorentz transformation is essentially a rotation which involves the one space and one time. Let us go ahead. Now, we understood boost essentially as a rotation which involves one spatial coordinate and one time coordinate and that that which leaves the speed of light same in all coordinate system. Let us finally get the expression for the Lorentz transformation. Let us try to simplify the expression only along x axis. Full Lorentz transformation is essentially cumbersome. It is better to first understand as most of the textbook give you is expression for the boost along x axis. In this we have coordinate system O and O2. We have O1 given by T x1, x2, x3 and O2 is given by T tilde xi1, xi2, xi3. Because we do not have to call it a t, we can call it a x0 and xi0, but for the sake of uh, making connection with the earlier formulas, we can use this. As we go along, we will not be using this uh, expression. So, let us uh, go ahead. Lorentz transformation which involves the pure boost along x axis is given by lambda 0 0, lambda 1 0, lambda 0 1 and lambda 1 1. And other side is a identity matrix because it does not transform, it retains the same things. These are simply going to be 0. So, now explicit equation is given as a t is equal to lambda 0 0 t tilde plus lambda 0 1 xi 1 and the x 1 is given as lambda 1 0 t bar plus lambda 1 1 xi 1. Of course, x 2 is equal to xi 2 and uh, x 3 is equal to xi 3 from this uh, expression. We can differentiate it very easily. We already know that the lambdas are constant and then we get the expression for the d t and the d x 1. I drop out the indices d x and 1 and d xi without confusion. I drop the indices 1. We just simply call it as x and uh, xi which implies that uh, it is x 1 and uh, xi 1. So, you can see that the null condition is given by d t square minus dx square is equal to 0. One can substitute this directly using this equation here and simplify collect all the terms with the dt terms, dt tilde terms then you get is lambda 0 0 square minus lambda 1 0 square. Now, the xi term also you can collect and that is what we get is lambda 1 1 square minus lambda 0 1 square and then you have a cross term here. Now, independently on the frame xi 2 it is also satisfies the null condition. This is the condition as if we transform the light path from O1 to O1. O2 and this is the expression which we get for the transformation. As a standalone and the O2 itself, it should satisfy the null condition as per the postulate of special theory of relativity and then both should match in order to get the condition for the Lorentz transformation. What we get here is a lambda 0 0 square minus lambda 1 0 square is equal to 1. And then we have a lambda 1 1 square minus lambda 0 1 square is equal to 1. 
and the cross term has to vanish. That happens only when lambda 0 0 into lambda 0 1 should be equal to lambda 1 1 into lambda 1 0. So, these are the condition which we get for the lambdas and then let us try to simplify this further. To match it with the standard definition which you get on the various books, we need to make a few assumptions. The first assumption is that lambda 0 0 divided by lambda 1 1 is equal to lambda 1 0 divided by lambda 0 1. That is what we get from the one of the conditions. The assumption here is basically that ratio to be 1. Of course, why 1? The 1 is the simplest. You can take any number, the resulting in the some multiplicative factor which is hanging around in your derivation. Now, what is this second assumption? Second assumption which says that the lambda 0 0 is equal to lambda 1 1. This is not really an assumption. After making the first assumption, you simply get lambda 0 0 as a lambda 1 1 and that essentially written and called as a gamma. So, you can call it anything gamma or you can retain the lambda 0 0 then it would be very difficult for me to pronounce each time that is why I called it as gamma. So, you can call it anything you want but the standard textbook uses the notation that it is gamma. The assumption lies here is the second term which is lambda 0 1 is equal to lambda 1 0 is equal to gamma into beta. In principle you can call it anything I could have called it as a simply beta but in order to match with the definition which comes along your textbook and also you find that otherwise expression get bit cumbersome if you simply call it as a beta since they are common multiplicative factor which comes in result in the much simpler expression for the relation between the gamma and beta. So, let us use the standard notation we call it as a gamma 0 1 and a gamma 1 0 as a gamma into beta. Why? Again that is a simplest possible case. So, now we can use the above expression and get the relation between the gamma and beta. It is straightforward to substitute and we get gamma square is equal to 1 minus beta square. Aha, uh -huh, that is it. Here we have obtained the standard expression for the Lorentz transformation. Have we or have we not? No, not yet. We see that we do not know what is the value of beta. In order to get the value of beta in terms of velocity, we make a assumption number 3. The assumption number 3 says that the frame match at t is equal to t bar is equal to 0 and the frame O2 moving with the velocity v along the x axis etc which you know what are the standard uh, thing which is done for the Lorentz transformation and if you do that you immediately get beta is equal to v the velocity of the frame. What is it? I thought we must be getting v by c or something like that because we do not get that. Remind you that the c is equal to 1 is already gone into this. We are measuring distance in terms of second. So, I could have gone through elaborate way of saying that v and c are there and they are blah 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 and then I avoid the whole thing. Let us consistently work out with c is equal to 1. So, beta would be simply v and you have the Lorentz transformation in the standard form. But that is not really important from our point of view. What we need to see is that the idea of Lorentz transformation is essentially ds square is same in all frame or in other words velocity of light is uh, same in all coordinate system. The first condition is a inertial frame condition. Now, let us quickly remind you that the, in the Newtonian mechanics we have seen that the Galilean transformation preserves the inertial frame and when we wanted to do the equation of motion in a non-inertial frame we simply use the Lagrangian formalism and use the arbitrary coordinate system and then we showed that equation of motion obtained from the Lagrangian is uh, generally covariant. We can use the same thing if you want to do special theory of relativity with the non-inertial frame. You can simply use the Lagrangian system with the four dimensional system and new kinetic energy which is given by dt square minus dx square etc. And that is basically using the Minkowski metric. And then you can transform to arbitrary coordinate system and then you essentially have special theory of relativity with incorporating the acceleration and non-inertial frame. So, that is simply not enough for general theory of relativity. General theory of relativity is not just about playing with the mathematics. It requires 
uh, some more physical idea. We will look at the, some of these ideas in the coming lecture. Let me stop here with the idea of uh, Lorentz transformation and give some time to digest and some exercises to solve.